Headed out to do morning chores. It's a little bit late in the morning. It's about, I think, quarter to eight or so. <clears throat> I'm usually out here around quarter to six, six o'clock. So but, but that's during the week. So during the week. Because the weekend yeah. she slept in. Yeah, till 6.30. <laughs> so, um, got some table scraps for Betsy so she gets fed in the morning. And um, this is the chores that we do on Saturdays. Uh, or on the weekend. Um, I don't do all of this during the week, but there's always something to do. <clears throat> during the weekend, I clean stalls, scrape the floor barn, or the barn floor, <laughs> floor barn. And um, might clean up some um, areas that aren't being used right now. Um, that we moved some goats out of recently. Okay. So, so she's being greeted for the morning chores. Then they'll pester her and want to get up in her feed, and this joint just kind of gives her a break. Plus, I put her uh, heart monthly heartworm medicine in there, and she gets a um, flea and tick medicine every three months. So I put those in her food this morning, and I want to make sure that she eats all of it. So. Lock the gate because in the morning the goats get fed and they all come in here inside. So that allows for me not to get trampled. I hang the feeders up after every feeding because the chickens like to roost up here and sometimes they'll poop in the feeders and I don't like to have to keep cleaning them out. goat food <clears throat> um, I only feed grain once a day and it's always in the morning but they get hay throughout the day um, and at night time so This is a grain that you mix, right? Yeah. Yourself? <clears throat> yes. You... I mix this myself. Um, it's got, uh, break it up for you. So. Has uh, black oil, sunflower seeds, rolled oats, or crimped oats, um, barley, and then um, alfalfa. And I use a specific formula to mix it. I mix it by hand right now. Eventually I want to get a mixer, um, just like a cheap um, concrete mixer that I can mix bigger batches of it. Right now I do um, a 
every other Saturday um, I mix it and it will I do enough to fill this barrel and it'll last two weeks and then I also mix the um, feed for bucks but instead of uh, putting alfalfa pellets in theirs they get Timothy pellets. Madeline's here to assist. This is a problem. <laughs> Every time I try to feed the goats, the chickens want to eat the grain. But the goats push them out right quick when they come in, so. You have to adapt. <laughs> When we let the goats in, if there's other people out in the barn with us, which usually during the week there's no one out in the barn with me, I'm the only one doing it. Um, on weekends, Madeline's usually out here, and sometimes Rick Isaac's out here working with the cats. <clears throat> but we always double check that the gate is secure, and then we yell, goats coming in, because people have been trampled before. <laughs> goats coming in! I go out there and I uh, put their hay out for the day and I also um, check their waterers. So these are my tartar hay feeders and um, I put lids on them because the chickens try to get up here and nest in the hay and so I just made these lids out of half inch plywood and some good strong zip ties and they just fold right up um, you'll see that this is a feeder that they can eat for both sides but I push it up against the coop wall this way because um, them being so light as they are and the Kikos being big goats, they're quite large, pretty powerful. Most of them weigh um, close to 100 pounds. Several of them weigh quite a bit over 100 pounds. Lay is almost so 200. They tend to flip these um, when they get aggravated that there's no hay left, or if they're trying to push somebody else out of the way so they can get in there and get more hay. So for me, it's better to have them pushed up against a wall um, if you're going to set these out freestanding, I would suggest that you anchor them somehow if you have big goats like Kikos. You may if you have boars, possibly. If you have like um, Nigerian dwarfs or something like that, I don't think you really have to worry about anchoring them. I don't think they can get enough strength or enough leverage to tip them over. So um, I always come over, bring the whole bale over here first because I got two hay feeders over here. And it's easier to put them in here and then carry the hay over to the other side. The reason why I put my hay feeders in here is because this is their loafing area. Which means it's where they come in and lay down and relax. And by having the hay feeders over here, any wasted hay 
gets put into the loafing area where they rest and just kind of lounge around and they tend to have their babies either far out into the pasture or right up in the loafing area so um either way and then once the babies come put little warming boxes out here they're just little 55 gallon drums that i've cut in half i put those out here for them to lay up on split a whole bale between all three feeders um usually go through i've got uh, 27 goats usually go through about a bale and a half a day um, because we have a lot of pasture for them to browse in but being that it's winter time now i'm up to about two bales there's still green stuff out there because we're in florida so let's put this in here i break it up a little bit because they tend to waste less if it's broken up they're not pulling I'm going to take the remainder of this bale and put it in on the other side. The reason why I like the tartars is because they work. <laughs> Whereas you'll see here, that's being torn down today. That is a failure. <laughs> I actually attempted to do a hay feeder where I could put two bales out at once. Um, and as Rick always says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it works, stick with it. So. Um, but I also tell her, go ahead and try it and see if it works. Yeah, she tells he does tell me that. Try it, see if it works. And we're always trying to find ways to make things a little bit easier on the farm so because there's always so much to do so and this way having the lid on it i can even overstuff it and a little drop down as the eat this is the failed attempt so why how did it get bent <laughs> that is uh from goats ramming their heads in it trying to get more of the hay out of the bottom that was in there it lasted about two days but it was an experiment. I just wanted to see if how long it would take them to eat the two bales if I put them out in bale form and just set them out here. So this right here, this is the queen of the herd. So Lala said that most of them weigh about 100 pounds. They're about 110, 120. But that one right there is Leia. She's about 200 pounds. I forgot to keep the gate closed. I was supposed to give them some medicine, some of them some medicine this morning. So. These are uh, mineral feeders. And um, all I'm doing is feeling for any hard clumps that they won't eat. So. We use uh, Sweet Licks Meat Maker. The goats absolutely love it, but apparently there's a shortage of it right now. So my feed uh, person hasn't been able to get me any new bags of it. I do have some left, so I'm hoping and praying that it comes in before. That was skillful. So right here is Heat Seeker's mama. And she is pregnant 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 and that's the notorious miss rose right there she's the only one gave us triplets last year rose gave us triplets last year this is fancy and you can see their ligaments in the back end are starting to release she's bagged up nice chickens like to roost up here and then they poop all over everything so I put these out and it catches anything that drops down and doesn't go into the water um, as I said on the weekends I do a lot of other chores that I don't do during the week um, we wash we have automatic water feeders 
they're the kind that have the little plunger that goes up and down and um, so uh, every weekend these get scrubbed with a little bit of bleach um, just to keep them clean it's not a big deal we only have a few of them out here and so and Madeline's usually helping me do chores on Saturday so it goes a little bit faster but just a matter of scrubbing them clean you always want to keep your waterers clean um, if they're not clean they promote illness in the goats so um, you know right now the water is really cold because <laughs> it was in the 30s last night um, but um, we can use these in Florida because we don't get the deep temperatures that they do up north so um, I know a lot of people that have um, heated ones that they use. Um, I use a little bit of bleach and scrub it with a scrubber. I let it fill up once and then I rinse it out again. Well, that one's filling up. I come over here and do the next one. Just scrubbing it. Make sure you get it good and clean along the edges and stuff. I do this every weekend and it only takes a few minutes. During the week, we check them, make sure there's no debris and stuff in them. If there is, we just scoop it out. Let it run fresh, clean water in there. Pearly Pearl. Well, you got basketballs in there. Stormy looks like, Stormy's got those big medicine balls he used to play with in gym class. <laughs> That's, that's one of our first timers right there. She looks awesome. Hey, big girl. <laughs> and that's that's Heat Seeker's mama. This is Heat Seeker's sister, right there. And he always hangs with her mama. This is the notorious Sasa. She's first timer. That's first timer. <laughs> She's the sweetest thing. She is very affectionate. She loves people, but she loves hay. So she's always the last one to get out of the barn because she eats off the hay pile. <coughs> All of our yes, Doofus. All of our um ones that we put in, we put 14 in to breed, and all of them took. They settled, so they're all good. <coughs> And, um, How many did we hold out? Five? Yeah. So um, the delivery date, um, the earliest they'll start delivering is actually Christmas. So maybe we'll have some Christmas babies. <coughs> hay gets me every morning. I have an allergy to hay, but... After that's done, I feed the chickens. I feed them in here. Um, we were feeding them with auto feeders and they were getting so much feed um, that it wasn't healthy for them. So we decided to start scattering their feed in the morning and then they scratch throughout the day because they're free range. So um, every morning, Open it up. They all think. I got something stuck on my foot. So. There's chicken poop in there. A big old scoop of chicken feed. So, Dur 
in the week, that would be the last thing I did before I went to the buck barn is throw out the chicken feed. Um, but because it's the weekend, while they're in here nibbling, these that's um, mealworms, fly larva. So I use a couple of different ones. This is fly fiesta. It's all made by flock party, but I buy a few bags of these. And then just throw some a couple of scoops out for them. Adds extra protein during the winter time because they need it. Have to hide it because they'll peck the bag. <clears throat> I just opened this because some of them are too lazy to come around and get it. They just rather run through the door. Um, by this time, Betsy's usually done eating. So I let her out. Make sure she ate Boo boo. Betsy. Betsy. She's very independent. Madeline's in here playing with her, playing with the cats. I think the cats need to be moved out here pretty soon. Um, Madeline's usually helping me clean. She cleans her 4-H pen. She cleans the waters in her 4-H pen. She does the hay. She does all that stuff on the weekends. So, um, but. As you can see, I have a scraper. So this, this thing has been incredibly helpful. It was Rick's idea. This scraper is nothing more than a linoleum scraper that you would use to take up old linoleum off the floor. Because before we were using like a hoe and things and just sweeping. This thing works amazing as a scraper. Particularly because we have, a con because we have concrete wings on the barn. are healthy and it just breaks down naturally. stalls to do because there's nothing over in this paddock right now. Madeline's going to go over and clean the 4-H pen basically doing the same exact thing we just did in here. Um, they're her goats. She takes full responsibility for them. Um, so that's part of her job. So you got left now is just kind of sweep then, out in here, right? Um, once the birds are done because I got to go over and do buck stuff. <laughs> And I let them finish up while I'm over there. And then what I'll do is I'll come back over here and I gotta make some changes with my hay pile and stuff like that. And then I'll end up scraping all this out 
and um, taking those the paper bags up to the compost so they can break down and then uh, we also have to clean the cat pan um, right now they're using a litter pan because um, they're still kind of small so we haven't put them out yet and uh, scrape all this get all this cleaned up um, Betsy needs to be brushed today she's got her winter coat in and she tends to get some knots up in the collar area and behind her ears and they'll cause sores if you don't keep track of them so this kind of gives you an idea of what we do every weekend there's still more chores that have to be done but that would make a really long video so thanks for watching uh hit that subscribe button ring that bell for future content and remember always be kind to each other